Hi, welcome to this video, and this is a video is all about my uh, TRS, my uh, tiny telephone, TT Bantam patch bay. So here's the TT Bantam cable, right there, and there's the TT Bantam patch bay. This is a TT Bantam patch bay right here. Here's another TT Bantam patch bay right up here, right up here. Um, so yeah, this is what the inside of the TT Bantam patch bay looks like. These are all the soldering points right here. Um, you can see that some of them are wired together, like the bottom and top are wired together. You can see that. You can see some wires in there. So you can actually wire them together inside as well. The patch bay that's in behind is not wired together like that, not like this one. So the wires all come out the back you know, you solder them on here, and then the wires come out the back. And then in the front, here's the front of the, front of the patch bay. And in the front of the patch bay, you take your patch cable, and you plug it in like that, like that. And then you want to make a connection. You put the patch plug in another connector like that. I hope you can see that. That. Just like that. So anyways, as you can see, I have two patch bays. And then when you want to work on the patch bay, you can actually swing this whole thing open. And you can work on the patch bay, and then you can close it. And as you can see, this patch bay doesn't have any cover. And the other patch bay in the back has a cover. So this other patch bay in the back here. This is the one I use all the time, and it has a cover on it. See, it's got wood on the top and the bottom. So it's got a little wooden box that I made for it. Um, so um, these are the little things. Um, this is These patch bays are made by a company called ADS. Um, the other ones are they're both made by ADS. This one's an older one, and the other one's a newer one. Um, so... This is where you plug the uh, cable in, right here. Just like that, you can see how the cable's plugged in. Just like that. So you can see how you would solder it up there. You would solder, um, you know, you could solder the ground. Um, and then there's the shield, and then there's the tip. So shield, tip, and ground, so three connectors. And then there's, um, I only use the top and the bottom connectors because I got these pretty beefy cables here, so I can only really use the top and bottom connectors. But there's actually three connectors on each each one of the, those three connections. So um, as you can see, this patch bay has 24 s spots. And um, uh, you can see I made a little map right here. This is my little map. This is what's wired up so far. So um, what do you connect a patch bay for? You connect a patch bay to your computer. So I have my computer, the audio from my computer coming out of the in and into the patch bay. So um, and um, I actually have my computer audio coming through a USB sound card and then out to SPDIF and into an ADA analog digital analog converter and then analog into my patch bay. And then I use that path and then so that one of these connectors here, if I stick one of these cables into here, it, it's connected to my PC. So, and that connection is right here. Uh, no, it's right here, these two, one, two. And what I did was um, inside the patch bay, I wired two of these together um, just on the bottom. So these two are actually connected. These two, one, two, and three and four here, these two are connected. So all of the left channel is connected to the left channel and the right channel is connected to the right channel. And um, you connect them like uh, tip to tip, sleeve to sleeve, and ground to ground. And so what happens is, is that the, um, the audio from the ADA converter from my PC 
comes into this. It just comes into here. It doesn't come into here. It comes into here. And then the wires are connecting these two. So this is what's coming out of here is the same as what's coming out of here. And that's my PC. So that's really handy. And that's what I just did. So if you want to do like um, a patch bay, this is a good feature to have. It's called like parallel processing. But you can use that for other stuff too because it's for monitoring too. So say that I specifically wanted to do this for my sampler because I want a sample from my computer. So one of these two leads goes into my sampler and then I sample and, um, and then I can also play it back. So um, into my mixer. So there's different reasons and then you can also have parallel compression too. So parallel compression, or sorry, not parallel processing is really, really, really cool. Like hardware parallel processing, you know, is really, really nice because basically what you do is you can process the sound through like a reverb unit or a special effects unit. And then you can process the sound through like not processed and you can mix the two. So it's really nice because you can really kind of flavor your sound without destroying it. Like it's basically, you're just adding some ambience to your original sound. And um, so you're mixing in the original sound with the uh, effect and it's, uh, it's a really cool thing to do. So there's a lot of possibilities there too that you could do with that. So anyways, as you can see, I have my uh, keyboard in is I label these one to 12 on the top and uh, 13 to 24 on the bottom. So I have my Yamaha sampler in is number six. So if I count over one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's where my, if I connect there, that's my Yamaha sampler in. So if I want to take my computer and I want to record to my sampler, I just take a cable and I connect it from cables that are the same just because it looks nicer and uh, from here and then my, my sampler is number six so I can go one two three four five six like that and then it works so it's good to have a little map so it shows you what you set it up so now what I have is I have my PC audio is going into my sampler in. And um, so as you can see, there's like a million ways you could connect everything up. And um, right now, I basically just have my sampler connected up. And um, I'm changing my studio. Like a, There's like big changes to my mini studio like this year. The biggest changes are that I changed my main sound card and um, I used to have like um, um, a PC card like it's an old card like a PCI card as a sound card and I went and changed um, over to a USB sound card and so now I'm using a USB sound card and it's um, from sound devices it's called a USB pre um, it's a couple years old it's not new at all it's really old actually and uh, like I don't know over five years old and um, it's actually um, the company's sound devices is from like the film industry, basically. Um, so it's used like their, their stuff is used for like um, film shoots and stuff and uh, TV and film. And um, so, yeah, it's a USB sound card and it's called a sound devices USB pre. And it's a very, very simple sound card. It's like audio in and audio out. Like there's only, I think, um, four channels out maybe it's like two or four channels out and uh and two channels in recording it's really simple and um and um it's basically a mic preamp it's got two mic preamps as well and it's got a digital um a, a direct input for instrument direct in and it's got line in and tape in and it's got digital out and digital in via SPDIF. And it's very, very simple. 
and uh, but it sounds really good and i also have um, my latest addition to my uh, studio is a uh, lucid ada ada24 um, digital to analog analog to digital converter and the maximum sample rate is 48 kilohertz and um, i think it's 20 bit and um, so that's my uh, conversion new converter so it's a quite a huge difference from what I was running. I was running a, uh, a really old uh, 9652 RME Hammerfall card. And so it's a completely different change. And um, so the new card, this total cost for me was like, it was very, very cheap. It was like the USB Pre from Sound Devices version one. I got it for like, uh, I think it was 150 bucks on eBay. Um, the ADA8824 from Lucid, I got an amazing deal. I got $100 on Craigslist, um, which is crazy. And, and then, um, so these are my latest additions. And I have like a, a Soundcraft 16-channel mixing board. So my big change, too, is that now I'm using my film uh, mixing uh, really, really micro, tiny mixing board. It's a four channel mixing board and it's also got um mic preamp so it's like it's actually five channels but one channel is mic preamp and then there's like four channels four mono channels really really high quality but like as you can see it's only four channels so it's a completely different setup now so you know and and then i use um a hardware mixer like a, i mean a hardware studio recorder i don't use a hardware studio recorder um i actually like um i do a really like strange way of recording music and my strange way of recording music is that i use a um a really old video camera to uh, like record my audio and that's like you'll never probably hear anybody you probably won't find anybody that does it like i do it and um, so I actually use a video camera to record my tracks, which is like you'll probably never hear anybody do this. And I like the sound quality that it on. I happen to use a JVC video camera and I really like the sound quality that I get when I actually record like my music into the um, uh, into the video camera. So that's kind of like it's a sort of a semi professional video camera, but it, the audio quality is really, really nice. And I find that works better than mixing down like inside my DAW, like Cubase Pro. So you'll find probably nobody else that does it like that. Maybe people do it, but they just don't admit it. I don't know. But um, yeah, you can, a lot of people don't realize that you can use these video cameras just like you would like a hardware recorder for music. So anyways, yeah. So um, the whole reason like inside we're, back to patch bays and basically like I wired these up here um, the other thing you want to know about wiring is you got to know a bit about soldering and it's good to have some like flux paste like this so it's uh, no clean flux uh, so that's nice it's by MG chemicals um, so that's what I use like if uh, the solder is not sticking that's what I use the no clean flux it's pretty cheap it's like five dollars a bottle or something i use this uh, also these um this uh teflon coated uh silver wire so it's uh it's got a layer of silver on it on the wire like a very small layer of silver um, but it just makes it easier to solder and it's teflon coated this wire is fantastic just about for everything for making little patches and stuff inside your electronics um and so, yeah, inside, just to make that parallel processing, um, because what you want is eventually, there's another way to do it, but the best way to do it, like, um, so say you want to mirror two of these, like two of these, you want to be exactly the same. You do it up and down, like these one and this one, or this one and this one. So you want the same signal to be in here and then mirrored in here. So, um, and uh, so the, re the way you do that is you wire these uh, posts together. These little tiny posts, you just wire them together. 
So again, what you would do is the two sections you want to wire together, you'd wire to you'd f figure out which one's the um, which one's the tip, which one's the sleeve, and which one's the negative. There's a common negative on these, and the common negative is at the top. Um, like so, that post, this post right here is like the common negative for all three of these. So there's basically one negative, and then there's like each one of these um, um, points, each one of these um, sockets has a sleeve and a tip, or a ring and a tip, a ring and a tip, and a ring and a tip. So there's like two connectors, two connectors, and two connectors. So you have to connect them up, and you have to connect them up also like ring to ring, sleeve to sleeve, and tip to tip. There's also something called like um, balanced and unbalanced connector. So for the majority of connections that you make onto your uh, patch bay, you would connect, you know, the same thing I just said, sleeve to sleeve, um, ring to ring, and tip to tip. And also, you can find a diagram that would tell you how to do your TRS connections to, um, I think it's AES or ABU, EBU or something. You know those, um, like, there's different types of connectors, and so you can figure out how to do it. They will tell you th there's a connector with three prongs on it, and when there's la they're labeled one, two, three, and it tells you how to connect that one to the TRS connector. So it'll ta say the one is the tip, two is the sleeve, and three is the ground. So I don't know what it is. There's a l you can find it online, and it'll be like um, T I think it's TRS to AES connector. I can't even remember what it is. It's analog um, connector. I'll find it. So the connector is like um, XLR. So you want what you want to do is you figure out want to figure out how to connect XLR three pin XLR to um, TRS. So and then you just do it like so. Anyways, like inside of here for all the connectors here, you just got to be consistent. So all of these are wired. Like when you do wire them, you got to be consistent. So you know. However you do it, like uh, with your wire, you've got to be really consistent um, so that uh, and you got to troubleshoot your connections and all that. And uh, having like um, a, a meter is good to uh, test your continuity after you've done your soldering so you don't have any shorts and stuff like that. And everything's working like it should be. And um, so yeah, so anyways, like what I was saying is that you have like the three, the balance connectors. So the balance would be considered like XLR is balanced and like um, TRS is balanced, right? So like a TRS connector is your regular sort of like uh, stereo jack can be used as a stereo jack or it can be used as a TRS connector. So it's got a ring and a slip, uh, sorry, a, a ring and a tip and a sleeve. So it's three connections. And um, so those are like, you got to figure out how to do that. And then there's also something called unbalanced connections. So some gear takes unbalanced connections. If you have gear that takes unbalanced connection, like uh, mono unbalanced. So how would you do that? This is how you do it. You do it. Um, tip is completely a separate connection. So tip to tip. And then you have ring and sleeve or I'm um, sorry, ground and sleeve to ground and sleeve. So ground and sleeve are connected together. So when you open up the uh, connector, you connect up the ground and the sleeve. So don't worry about these. These ones you leave all the same. You connect up all of these exactly the same. Okay, so all of these cables are connected the same. Don't worry about these. When you're talking about like balanced and unbalanced, those are the connectors that actually go to your gear. Okay, that's like, these ones are what's going to your gear, and this is what you have to worry about. So you would open this up, and then you would do it like if you were on a some gear that's like unbalanced, um, you would like connect here, 
So what you would do for this one is you would connect up, so tip, you wouldn't touch the tip, but the sleeve and the ground you would put together. So you'd pull off the sleeve wire and you'd solder it onto ground. So you'd have ground to ground and sleeve to ground. And then you'd go to the other end as you do the exact same thing. So the, the one that you'd have to your unbalanced gear, like say if this is, this here is the unbalanced uh, line in, which is like, I think it's keyboard that I have. So keyboard I have number 20. So 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. So this one's my keyboard in. So this one is unbalanced. So the two wires that I have connected to these two on the back, they're wired for unbalanced gear. So that's what I did is that I connected it again. I connected it uh, sleeve to ground, ground to ground, and um, um, tip to tip to tip. Don't touch the tips. Don't worry about the tips. Just leave them the way they were. So that's how I connect. That's just like a short primer on like how to do it, like connect. Also, always use silver solder because it's non-toxic. So don't use lead-based solder. Use silver solder. And uh, work in a well-ventilated area. And um, when you're soldering. And even like take precautions, like have a, have a window open, have a fan on. Um, and even wear like a vapor. Um, if there's a lot of smoke crea being created by your soldering, then uh, wear like a vapor mask, like with a vapor filter. It's like a special filter. It's not a regular dust mask. It's a vapor. It can, it, you know, it can filter out vapors as well. So that's like the best precaution to take. So um, yeah, so anyways, I'm pretty happy because this is a really good uh, setup for like your sampler. So like I can sample from my PC into my sampler. I can listen to my sampler. Like uh, when I play my sampler, I can listen to my sampler as well. And then you can also like, I can do the same thing. So I can actually play my sampler, listen to back to what I'm sampling. Um, I can play my sampler with my MIDI keyboard and then I can listen to my sampler alongside of like say if I want to run a beat coming out of my PC so I run the beat out of my PC and then I can run MIDI to my sampler and I can play a sequence to my sampler at the same time and then send all that audio out to a mixer and then um, I can listen to it at the same time and um, when I'm happy with what I've listened to and like then I can record it on an outboard recorder like I said to which I do which nobody else probably does is that I record to a video camera and then I bounce that track back into my PC so anyways um, I thought that would be an interesting video for somebody um, oh the last thing I wanted to say is like um, if you're building your studio like learn from my mistakes okay <laughs> that sounds really stupid but well anyways like this is kind of a very very powerful thing to have because it's it's going to save you like problems like uh down the road um, um if you can set up one of these um tiny telephone uh, patch bays it's really good for down the road like um it's a, it's a pain in the ass to do it, and it takes a lot of work to set it up. But um, the workflow, once you have it set up, it's like it's a breeze. Like once it's actually set up, it's pretty nice. Um, and then you just set it and forget it, right? You don't really have to touch anything after it's all set up. But, um, oh yeah, what I was going to say about uh, studio is like, um, yeah, it's a really good time, like for home studio. Um, you can pick up really good gear. For pretty cheap now like professional gear and uh yeah this is i'm pretty stoked like you know it really excites you what what excites people for making music is that they want to try a new way of doing something and that's kind of like what propels people forward is like wow you know it's like what's what propels me forward is that when i i have a whole new setup and a way of doing things it's just like oh it's like i get really stoked right so um Anyways, like, all I just want to say is that, um, 
like uh, just because my um, RME card conked out, I don't even know why, it could be a Windows issue, but um, so when I was had problems with my RME card, I'm sure it probably just works, I'm pretty sure it was just a Windows issue, why it's not working, but anyways, for a while I was without a sound card, and then I said, what the hell, like I'll try to get a USB sound card, right? And so I was looking at some of the uh, sound cards, like I was looking at like, you know, like there's a whole bunch of companies that make these like USB sound cards. And um, I wanted a pretty professional one. So I wanted like an either an army baby face or there's a couple of other ones that are like really high end. I can't remember the name of them, but they're really holding their value now. You would think that they'd be like super cheap now, but they're like they must be super popular because like the baby faces are still really, really expensive. And there's another one. I can't even remember what it's called, but it's. It's a, it's a tiny, like, one, too. Like, it's not a full-blown studio one. It's, like, it's just, like, a micro thing. And, um, again, like, way over $500, right? So I ended up going with this. Uh, I'm a real fan of, like, film studio stuff because, the like, this is a somebody, if, if you are, like, really, um, if you're willing to take a chance, like, some of this uh, film studio stuff that they use on film sets and stuff, the gear is like the quality is like even better than some of the music s studio stuff like i'm not even kidding and for example this sound device is uh this usb pre that i got that's it's really old it's like over five years old and um it's uh it was actually from a rental company and it's for a film it's like the us if you look up sound devices they make a lot of gear for like film studios like film you know, filming projects and documentaries and stuff like that, and film projects. So that's what I'm using for a sound card. So it's not something you probably even ever heard of. And I also have a little tiny uh, portable mixer, and it's made by a company called Marenius. And it's only five channels. It's like one microphone preamp, a really nice microphone preamp. Like it's, and again, it's from like film studio stuff. Um, it's from a small, tiny company in like, I think it's Switzer Sweden. I'm pretty sure it's Sweden. And um, it's called Marenius, and um, it's a little tiny mixer, and it's a beautiful mixer. And again, the quality is just unbelievable. And I got this Lucid 88, 8824, and it's only like uh, 48 kilohertz. And uh, I got it for 100 bucks, and uh, I love the sound of 48 kilohertz. And unless you're like a pro with like a whole lot of money to burn, you know, um, this is really nice. It's made by Lucid. And uh, so, yeah, I was able to score, and I scored that for a hundred bucks. So I was really, I mean, I if you, you can really make a nice little studio right now for like not that much money. Um, uh, if you really hunt for deals and, um, and then you can save some money. Um, so like actually, my whole philosophy's changed. Um, I used to be a person who was thinking, oh, I need lots of inputs and lots of outputs. And now I basically have this USB pre and it's only got like, uh, I think four outputs and two inputs. So it's, you know, four channel output, two channel input or something like that. It's really basic. And um, so um, I'm operating on a completely different way now. I'm using a USB sound card. Um, I'm using, this is my first time I ever had an ADAD, ADA output, outboard converter ever. This is the first time I ever had that. It's like a high call, it's a studio piece of gear. It's like, you only usually see these in studios, like this ADA, and the prices are like coming way down. You can now get them for like 100, 200, 300 bucks now. And, um, I think you will blow, be blown away if you get something like this, really a really nice ADA converter. And they're like really expensive. Like RME is like really like overpriced too. Like they're really overpriced, I think, which is probably, you know, I don't know. I, I was like a big fan of RME. I'm still a big fan of RME because their stuff is usually bulletproof and it's amazing. Um, so I am still a big fan of RME, but... Um, uh, you know, I've got this tiny little USB pre sound devices from sound devices. Now is my sound card, um, which cost me like, you know, uh, you know, 150 bucks, but the new ones are about a thousand dollars. 
so they are expensive like this is a, their first version and this version number two is like a thousand bucks so it is a nice sound card like um you know it is pricey when it came out and stuff like that um but it is good and you can still get them they're like i got the probably the cheapest one on ebay so i got a, about 150 you can get them for like 300 uh, maybe and um so yeah it's kind of a completely different year for me this year um but anyways, it's a lot of fun. I have been having a, having a lot of fun. And I'm really, really stoked at uh, and happy about this because, um, like, I can do parallel processing with my my um, hardware mixer. And, um, yeah, all this, ti this time off work, well, I guess all of this time off is, I guess a lot of people right now are having time off work and, you know, uh, you know, it's it's a hard time of the world that world we're living in, but uh, you know, I guess um, you can get down to business like with stuff that you want to do if you have a little bit of time off. But um, you know, I hope everybody's taken care out there, and um, yeah, I'm just taking it day by day. I think we all all we have to do is just take it day by day. So I hope you like this video, and um, the next videos I will be testing out my new setup where I soldered in the uh, the uh, like the f the four model channels out so that I can use my I did this all so I could use my Yamaha sampler like properly that's the whole reason for like me doing all the soldering and all this setting up is just so that I can uh, you know work on my Yamaha sampler sampling and um, but anyways like um, there's also another benefit to this is that my studio is completely changed now. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm moving away from like I have a 16 channel um, Soundcraft mixing board and I'm getting away from that and I'm going into this tiny four channel out. So basically, um, I'm doing a lot of mixing in the box. So I'll do be doing a lot of mixing. Like, so I'll have, like, some of the tracks already set up, like, maybe two or three tracks set up already in Cubase. And then I'll have, like, one or two tracks running from from hardware to gear. And then I'll mix that all down into just four tracks. And then I'll record it all. So, yeah, that's kind of my sort of micro setup. But it's tight, and the quality, I believe, will be a step up from my other stuff. So it's like the holy grail, like you're always chasing down like better sound quality, chasing down like your your tracks to sound better, chasing down, um, you know, having that punchy effect that your tracks have on you, so have on people, or, you know, just the way you sound, way it sounds. So that's kind of been my holy grail is like I've always been chasing down like, wow, how did that guy get that track to sound so good? You know, like when you hear a track, you're like, oh, well, that, that guy pushed it up to the bar, the pushed the bar up, you know what I mean? So I don't know. That's the way I listen to music. You know, I listen to music. When I listen to music, um, I, w I always say, like, um, listen to that music, right? Like, listen to how well that was mixed. And, you know, li listen to how something pops in a track, you know, like, that's how, you know, er I think everybody is, like, blown away by that. It was like, wow, the bass just pops on that. And, um, you know, the treble is really clear, the highs are really clear, and the bass pops, and everything is like um, a beautiful landscape, you know, like the clarity of the track is really nice, so you, you can see everything in the track, you know what I mean, like you can hear the bass line clearly, you can hear all of the instruments clearly, they're all defined, they're all separated, um, and no bells and whistles so like no like no hokiness you know it's just like so that's kind of what am i going for and like a like a purity into the music right so anyways that's how that's that's my little nerdy i have to stay busy you know we all have to stay busy these days you know so that's how i'm keeping busy right now you know i i have like a bunch of nerdy hobbies to keep busy so we all have to keep busy. Like, if you got some downtime at work, um, you know, you've got to, like, you know, have some hobbies. So I hope everybody likes that video. And thanks for watching.